Welcome to Thinking Toolset 1, practicing gratitude to develop a positive outlook. It's normal to think negative thoughts and to have doubts. After all, it's nature's way of stopping us from doing things that may risk our health and welfare. Such thinking, if left unchecked, however, can work against us. Firstly, instead of looking to understand the risk involved in trying something new, so that we can then manage it and make the best possible start, we focus only on those things that could go wrong and lose sight of the benefits we would experience if we tried it. And secondly, instead of seeing a shortfall in our performance as an opportunity to improve, to raise our game, we see ourselves as a failure and give up. Practicing gratitude will help you to develop a different view of the world and of your life. Studies have shown that those people who practiced gratitude were healthier, slept better, were more optimistic, made more progress with their personal goals, were more alert, more enthusiastic, and better able to handle stress than those who didn't. The toolset consists of this presentation, together with a prompt sheet to help you develop a gratitude mentality. This presentation describes what gratitude is and is not, why practicing gratitude is good for managing your negative thoughts, some barriers to experiencing gratitude, and three things you can do to practice gratitude. According to Robert Emmons, an academic who has spent over a decade studying it, gratitude consists of two things. Firstly, an affirmation of goodness. We acknowledge that while life is not as perfect as we want it to be, we have received and continue to receive good things. And secondly, recognising the source of the goodness. While it is important to take pride in the good things that we've achieved for ourselves, gratitude involves acknowledging others who have helped us to achieve the goodness in our lives. Gratitude is not the same as indebtedness. Indebtedness occurs when after receiving help or kindness, we feel obliged to provide some kind of repayment to our benefactor. When we feel gratitude, we most likely want to deepen our relationship with the benefactor, while a sense of indebtedness will most probably result in us wanting to avoid them until the debt is paid. In the last 10 years, a number of studies have been conducted in order to understand how practicing gratitude benefits our well-being. When it comes to emotional well-being, these studies show that when compared with people that don't, people who practice gratitude are happier, less depressed, less stressed, and more satisfied with their lives and social relationships. Grateful people also have higher levels of control of their personal growth, purpose in life and self-acceptance. Grateful people have more positive ways of coping with the difficulties they face in life. They're more likely to seek support from other people, reinterpret and grow from their experiences and spend more time planning how to deal with their potential problems. Grateful people also have less negative coping strategies, being less likely to try and avoid the problem, deny there is a problem blame themselves, or cope through substance abuse. Grateful people sleep better, and this seems to be because they have a greater tendency to have positive thoughts just before going to sleep. So as you can see, there are lots of reasons to start practicing gratitude. Before exploring some methods for practicing gratitude, you need to be aware of three types of mindset that can affect the results you achieve. Self-serving bias. This is a natural tendency to attribute something good that has happened to us to something that we did, while anything bad that happens is attributed to others and not ourselves. This bias can get in the way of our ability to recognise those to whom we might feel gratitude when something good happens to us. Like the self-serving bias, we also have a natural tendency to want to control our environment. This leads to dissatisfaction with our situation when we're unable to exert such control. This can also be a challenge when practicing gratitude, since in order to be grateful for what we have, we must accept that we cannot control everything in life. So when something good happens to us, and our self-serving bias hasn't kicked in, we're better able to recognize it and be grateful for it. The Just World Hypothesis In order to help ourselves plan and negotiate our way through life, research has shown that we adopt a mindset around the idea that we get what we deserve in life. Good things happen to good people, 
and bad things happen to bad people. We also know that life isn't always like that. Bad things can happen to good people, and vice versa. When practicing gratitude, we let go of this mindset. We don't consider what we do and don't deserve. We're simply grateful for the good things that happen to us. The practice of gratitude helps us to break down these mindsets, which, let's face it, only serve to make us dissatisfied and unhappy. The three things you can do to practice gratitude are keep a gratitude journal, count your blessings, and pay it forward. Keeping a gratitude journal is probably the most common way of practicing gratitude. Writing down your thoughts regularly helps you to organize them, to better understand them, as well as understand how they influence your emotions and the events taking place in your life. It's developing this understanding that makes life more meaningful. The prompt sheet provides advice on how to keep such a journal. Counting your blessings involves taking five minutes out of your day to think about what you're grateful for and to whom you're grateful to for whatever has either happened or will happen later that day. This simple technique helps by creating a break in the hustle and bustle of your daily routine. It forces you to stop what you're doing and think about the good things that have happened or will happen to you and it makes you focus on the goodness of others rather than on yourself. Remember, when it comes to having negative thoughts, such thoughts are often directed at ourselves, so taking time off from them helps. With practice, this technique helps you to rebalance the way you experience the world. Your positive, grateful thoughts provide a contrast to your negative ones, which helps you to see your world in a different light. Pay it forward is the opposite of the phrase pay it back. As mentioned at the start of this presentation, gratitude is not the same as indebtedness, so paying it forward is a way of taking the goodness others have given us and passing it on. It becomes an outlet for our gratitude. Doing good things to others not only benefits them, but us too. Firstly, it makes us feel good. And if we feel good, our thoughts are more positive. In fact, research involving depressed subjects demonstrates that they are better able to manage themselves when they're helping others. By paying it forward, we take a proactive role in creating a positive world for ourselves, because we're the ones taking action rather than expecting or waiting for our lives to become more positive. And the final benefit of paying it forward is that it diverts our attention from ourselves, because we're no longer thinking about us and engaging with those negative thoughts, but instead focusing our attention on another. Taking time off from our thoughts helps provide some perspective when we return to them. To get you started, the prompt sheet provides some examples of how you can pay it forward. Each of these three techniques, on their own or in combination, helps to develop the mental muscle required to break down our self-serving bias, reduce the need to control our environment, and avoid categorising what happens to us as deserved or undeserved through the use of the Just World Hypothesis. So why not practice gratitude today and start reducing those negative thoughts?